On this Sunday, as we are focusing on uh, just returning back to this rhythm of, of school and education, and you know, the, the reality is that the scripture reminds us that under, uh, in, e under the sun, in, there is a season for every single time and purpose under the sun. And that, you know, we all don't stay in one season for the whole of our life. But how many of you know that there are certain moments that sometimes the, the seasons shift and they shift without your permission? Anybody ever, particularly here in the Bay Area, uh, you, 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 you came out in the morning and it was cold and so you bundled on up. And then by the time the afternoon came and the sun, you know, got up over the fog and it hit 78 degrees, your morning clothes we're not, you know, uh, aligned with your afternoon experience. I mean, you didn't, you know, seek out the shift of that season just in your daily activity. It just happened just like that. But there are times, there are moments where we can not predict that seasons and times are changing. And there are moments and there are times in our lives where we can indeed uh, look at the calendar. We can look at the signs of the times. Uh, we can look at all of these uh, external circumstances and they can inform us that there is a shift that's happening in my life. Anybody ever been going through a shift in your life and, and you were a little late to catch up to the shift? And you, you spend a good chunk of your time you know, trying to accelerate your activity, accelerate your uh, practices. You were attempting to fit into this shift in your season. Well, as we enter into this time of uh, returning back to school, and I know we have at our congregation a whole spectrum of folks experiencing schools. We have our children and, and our young people who are in school mostly as a student. But if you've worked with young people, you learn that even them as students, they teach us as adults and teachers a whole lot. But it does not negate the need for them to be a student. We have folks in here who are, you know, heading into college and, and you know and realize that even if you're prepared as much as you think you are prepared, one thing college does, it can break you down. Man, I remember when I went to, 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 to high school, you know, I wasn't, you know, the best academic performing kid in high school, mostly because, you know, I was a bit of a knucklehead, praise God. Uh, and, you know, I thought the rapture was going to happen, you know, before we even graduated from high school. So I was like, what's the point? <laughs> what's the point? Jesus is coming back, praise God. I don't got to understand this trigonometry. Man, ain't no trigonometry in heaven. I'm just trying to walk the streets of gold. That's what I was telling myself, praise God. <laughs> and then the junior year in high school happened. All my friends is applying to college. Well, I'm going to, where are you going? I'm going to uh, Spelman. And this one said, I'm going to Stanford. And I'm going to, 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 to Howard. And they said, where are you going, McBride? I said, I'm going to heaven. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. And then I realized that uh, for all the applications, you know, because at our school when you applied, for college and you got an award, they would put it up in the hallway of the school. So, you know, I didn't want only heaven to be my destination. So it was literally peer pressure of my friends that made me start applying to UC Davis and Howard and UC Berkeley and all these schools with a two point something GPA. I thank God for affirmative action. It was still cracking back then. Somebody say amen. Amen. And I got into all them schools, I want you to know, amen. But I, I ended up, amen, realizing that even when I got to school, although I thought I was prepared, the next level showed me that what I had learned was not enough in and of itself to get me through that transition. And even as parents, somebody say amen, you know, we have our children and, you know, we, 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 we hope and pray. We think they're our splitting image. But how many know parenting will teach you a whole lot about yourself and about these wonderful little human beings you got? 
Amen. And you who are teachers, you know you're getting, amen, a whole lot of education, praise God. <laughs> every single season, every single year. What am I saying? I'm saying that in every moment of your life, there is an opportunity to win this season. And that's what we're going to talk a little bit about today. We're going to talk about you can win this season. 1 Samuel chapter number 17 is where we're going to spend our time in the Word today. Uh, this is a very wonderful story. I'm going to center young people in this sermon today because I don't want to appreciate that we do have young people on their way back into an environment where they are literally at the center, at least in education. I want to hope that every educational environment centers our young people. It is all about them. And I want you to know that in this sacred text, the scriptures, the Jewish scriptures, the, the Christian scriptures, the Bible, whatever we want to call it, you are well represented in the sacred text. That God's purposes in the world were not possible without the presence and the activity of young people, of youth who were able and willing to uh, internalize the power of the divine, the eternal, the God and creator of heaven and earth. I want you to know that you're never too young for the power of God to move through you. You're never too old for the power of God to literally arrest you and help you do that which you could not do through your own strength. And so in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 17, we come on uh, this story about David and Goliath. And I find it to be a very apropos story because one of the most important things that you and I are going to have to remind ourselves is every season brings us new giants, new obstacles, new enemies that we must tame, we must defeat, we must overcome. And there are often times that we uh, can use the lessons from our past to help us defeat the giants that we've yet to face. But how many know there are also some moments where you're going to have to build some new strategies to help you overcome the season you're entering. And so here we have uh, this wonderful young shepherd boy named David. And David was uh, anointed some time earlier in his life to be the next kind of king of Israel, David anointed to be the next king, but yet was still serving in a place where there was no kingdom. David was called by God to rule a whole nation, and yet when you find him in this story, he's still hanging out with sheep, with lambs. He's still out there fighting bears and wolves, even though he's been anointed to lead a nation. How many of you know there will be seasons in your life where your appointment has not yet caught up with your anointing? Where your station has not yet caught up with God's e uh, eternal and final plan for your life. And you and I must be okay going through the process of season to season, experienced to experience, uh, learning every moment of your life, God, how are you preparing me for my next appointment? Because quiet as it's kept, even though you may be anointed for it today, you may not be yet prepared to live it out. Amen, amen, amen. You know, I, I, I believe that there are moments in our lives where God gives you a glimpse of something great. Anybody ever had, you know, you daydreaming or you, you have a dream or a vision or a premonition, whatever you want to call it. You know, now they call it manifesting, you know. You know, just change the letters and the words around. I don't know. But you have this sense where something great is about to happen. But you look around you and you're like, amen, how can something great happen with what I have <laughs> in my hands? Amen. God's going to do something great, but I don't have nothing great around me. God said God was going to uh, open up this door, but all I see are locks. God said that this opportunity was going to present itself, but yet as I stand here, 
All I see are obstacles. But I want you to know that sometimes God shows you the end from the beginning so you can keep moving forward. God shows you the final destination so you don't get sucked into the paralysis of the present. Sometimes God has to show you what will blow your mind so you can, in this moment, change your mind. Do I have any witnesses in here that knows that God knows how to push you out of your comfort zone? And this is what we find in this story. David, anointed to be king, still serving in a role that was the furthest from a king. I mean, you got to remember, a king is the greatest, most powerful figure in a nation. A shepherd is some pretty working class conditions. <laughs> Somebody say amen. Now, you know, I don't think we appreciate, you know, the, the social role of a shepherd in, you know, uh, kind of agrarian societies. But I remember when I was, uh, you know, on a, on a trip, I, I, I think I was in Morocco. I was on a little vacation. And, you know, when I travel, particularly by myself, I like to rent a car. I don't want, you know, to be, you know, Ubering. And I couldn't Uber over here anyway because there was no Ubers, praise God. And they didn't want to tour bus. No, I just want a car. So I rented a car, and I was driving from uh, 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 Casablanca, I think, to Marrakesh. And so I put in, you know, they had the, 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 the Apple Maps. I put in the Apple Maps, Marrakesh, and it had a four-hour destination. So I was like, here we go. Let's go. Let's go. And, and, you know, it gave me two options. Now, the four-hour destination looked pretty straight, but there was a squiggly line destination that could get me there in three hours and 45 minutes because I'm one of these people who like to get off the road, as soon as I get on the road, I say, well, I'm going to shave this 15 minutes off my trip. And so I took the squiggly destination. And while I was driving on the squigglies, my destination time kept resetting itself. Mm -hmm. I want you to understand what I'm saying. Three hours and 45 minutes kept changing to three hours and 55 minutes. And I'm like, well, I know I'm going in the right direction. And the, the further I got in the trip, it just kept resetting itself. I thought I was taking a shorter destination when in reality, it took me six hours to get to a destination that perhaps should have took me four hours. And I took the four-hour destination on the way back because it was on an interstate. I didn't know that, praise God. But while I was on the squiggly destination, I ended up in the mountains. I swore I was in Afghanistan running the Taliban camps. Now, because I'm somebody who watched 24 and I, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I, I didn't know how Islamophobic I was. So I'm riding through the studio and I'm running into places and I'm thinking to myself, I'm sure enough about to be taken a hostage. Oh, God, why me? I'm just trying to get to Marrakesh. And one of those times out in the middle of nowhere, I ran into a road that was kind of washed out. And there was a little boy with about 50 goats, two uh, 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 bulls or cows with a stick, and he's hurting these animals down a washed out road in the middle of nowhere. I'm lost and I run into a shepherd boy in the middle of nowhere. I want you to think about David as that shepherd boy in the middle of nowhere. Now, my, my, my internet went out. I did not see any electricity, nowhere, no power lines. And I was thinking to myself, what do you do all day? out here in the middle of nowhere. If, if, if that is David, I want you to think about how David, being anointed to be the king of Israel, is out on a lost road somewhere, tending to things that seem so insignificant. And yet he held on to this promise, to this expectation 
that one day I am literally going to steward, going to rule, going to lead a nation. What is the lesson there? Don't allow your social location to overdetermine God's plans for your life. Because you may seem like you're in an insignificant place. But how many of you know God sees you beyond the abandoned, isolated, out of the way roads that you may be traveling on today? As a matter of fact, God may have you there so you can get some alone time. Because how many know when you are getting some alone time with God, you can dream a little bit more. You can hear the voice of God a little bit more. You can have your imagination run wild. And I find David to be this kind of a character. In 1 Samuel chapter number 17, the scripture says that David was there literally out there in the sheep. Verse number 20, David rose early in the morning and he left the sheep with a keeper and he took provisions and went as Jesse had commanded him. Jesse is his father. Jesse told him, listen, David, go give your brothers who serve in the army some rations. Go get them some supplies, you know, because they, they, they on the front lines. And then when you get done, you come on back here and tend to these sheep. David probably was like, okay, you know, I, I, I love to get a break from dealing with these sheep, goats, and all the whatnot. So David gets there, and as soon as he shows up, uh, he finds literally that they are in an encampment, and the army was going forward to battle, shouting the war cry. Verse number 21, and Israel and the Philistines drew up for battle army against army. And David left the things in charge of the keeper of the baggage. He ran to the ranks, went and greeted his brothers. And as he talked with them, the champion, the Philistine giant named Goliath came out of the ranks of the Philistines and spoke the same words that he spoken before. And David heard him. And what was the giant saying? The giant, if you go back up uh, to, to, to uh, verse number 10, the giant said, Today I defy the ranks of Israel. Give me one person, one man, that we may fight together. And the scripture says that everybody who heard him began to shake with fear. Trained soldiers. People whose only purpose was to be there to defend Israel, to defeat the enemies of Israel. They all were paralyzed by fear by this giant. And David, hearing it for the first time, begins to ask a whole lot of questions about what is it about this giant that has trained soldiers afraid? And one of the things that I've learned in life is there are some fights that only you can win. Some fights may intimidate certain folk, but you will have moments in your life where you will approach circumstances and through the power of your knowledge, your wisdom, your skill set, you are uniquely poised to defeat those enemies. But the key for us is we must show up to the fight in order to win. And that's one of my first lessons to a lot of us in this season. Always show up to your assignment. Somebody say, I got to show up. Now, listen, child of God, it's so important. You know, I joke with young people all the time, uh, particularly when I used to teach at the continuation school. On the first day of class, we would gather all the young people and say, listen, we want to congratulate each and every one of you. Why? Because all of you are straight A students. Clap it up for the straight A students. Amen. Oh, you know, and some of them, they just grin and smile because I think they never been a straight A student in their life. Here you are at a continuation school. How am a straight-A student, Reverend McBride? I said, because when you start off, you're starting off at 100%. Your biggest challenge, and this is a challenge for so many of us, is to just show up. Because life has a way of making you feel like you don't belong. Anybody ever been in a situation, in a place, in an environment where you work told you were uh, 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 people demonstrated to you that you don't fit in here 
And what happens to an individual when you internalize that you don't belong? A whole lot of things. One of the things you do is you will be prone to not stay in that space. You'll find ways to expel yourself from that space. We work with young people so many times, and I told them, you know, you have this kind of like success uh, threshold, and the moment you get too successful, you hit a fail button. Like, no, I can't be this success. This kind of success makes me nervous. But the key to you winning this season is you must show up. And it's not just enough for you to show up, but you must show up as your authentic self. So if you're going to show up, the second thing I want you to do is make sure you show up and be authentic. Somebody say be authentic. What I love about the story of David is that David shows up not as a soldier. I want you to think about showing up to the army. And everybody got their scopes and they got their fatigues. And what do you show? You show up in your, you know, civilian gear. <laughs> be like, uh... You ain't dressed for the occasion, bruh. Well, you know, this is how I get down, you know. When I, go into, when I go into a fight, I'm showing up as my authentic self. What is your authentic self? Well, child of God, I want to give you a couple uh, sage words of wisdom that the scriptures say before you were formed in your mother's womb that God knew you, meaning God had a purpose and a plan for the eternal version of you. And your authentic self is who God said you would be. Now, as we live in this world, uh, there are those who would like to turn you into something else. Turn you into a caricature of their own imagination. They would like to lay on top of you expectations and lies that, that serve their purpose and not the divine purpose that God has for you. But I want you to know that when God tells David you are fearfully and wonderfully made, God is telling that to you as well. That your authentic self is a fearfully and wonderfully made individual and that you can't allow others to put on you what God did not place on you. The great thing again about David is David shows up to the fight and when David gets ready uh, to accept the challenge to go fight this enemy, the people in his life who meant well said, listen, you can't win with what you have on. You need to put on this armor. You need to put on the, the, the stuff that we, you know, we, that worked for us. And David looked at him and said, you know, this stuff's unnecessary. I, I can't win this fight with these unnecessary garments on me. And showing up as your authentic self means that sometimes you're going to have to let go of some things. Woo. Lord, help me to talk to somebody in here today. You got to become comfortable in your own skin that the external voices and assumptions don't penetrate you. And I've talked about this a lot here at The Way, but one of the worst things that ever happened to human beings is social media. Because what social media does is it allows things to attach to you. Strangers. People that don't even know you begin to lay on us expectations. I was talking to a friend of mine and she was talking about, you know, all the many ways that the photoshopped social media platforms make you and I feel like we are not enough because we don't walk around photoshopped. I mean, can you imagine? <laughs> Lord, have mercy. Believe me, you know, in, in, in a social media world, there are some things I probably want to Photoshop out of my life. <laughs> Somebody say amen. But the, but the challenge is, unless you're going to live in the meta, in, 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 a, in a virtual world, you're going to show up as your real self eventually. Hello, somebody. There's not enough Photoshopping in the world to get rid of some of the things that God has intended to make you who you are. Amen, 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 amen. That's why I love uh, 
the 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 the, the words of of that that poet who 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 told uh, uh, I think it's uh, Baby Sugar to love your lips. Love your eyes, your ears, your nose. Love all that comes with your package. Why? Because if you don't love it, who else is going to love it? And when you don't love what God has given to you, then sometimes you are actually telling God, God, you made a mistake. And wouldn't it be something for you who have not lived half of a second as long as God has existed to tell the creator, you've made a mistake. No, God has not made a mistake. We have made the mistakes when we fail to be authentic. The other thing that you must do if you're going to win this season, listen, is you must remain curious. David showed up not with arrogance, but with questions. And I want to ask you, child of God, in this season of your life, are you asking the right questions? Or are you showing up with prepackaged answers that don't fit the questions of this season? Curiosity need not be the enemy of knowledge. Sometimes it is the question that unlocks the keys to the wisdom you see. Some of us better learn to ask different questions in this season. God, I know I'm in this season, but rather than me focusing on the questions from last year, I need to ask you, God, Lord, give me some new questions. Give me some curiosity about the season of life that I'm entering. I know that I was in fifth grade last year, but now, God, I want to ask some sixth grade questions. I know I was a senior in high school last year, but God, now I want to ask some, 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 some collegiate questions. I know I was a teacher last year, now I'm a principal. God, I want to ask some principal questions. I know I may have had this sickness in my life, but now I'm healed. God, I need to ask some questions. If you're going to win this season, you have to learn to ask questions. Curiosity is that catalyst for attaining wisdom and knowledge. And then, child of God, I want you to realize that when you show up to this season, you know what else? You're going to have to find your rocks. You're going to have to find those tools. David shows up, and he doesn't use a sword. He doesn't use a shield. David finds some rocks on the ground. And what do the rocks represent? Well, when David was a shepherd boy, he didn't have time to train with swords and with shields. He says, when the bears and the wolves came, all I had was a slingshot and some rocks. David realized that the same tools that have carried me through this past time, I'm going to have to learn to tap into those tools to fight these giants. And one of the things I love about rocks being plural is that every rock don't look the same. You're going to have a big rock for certain situations. You're going to have a small rock for another situation. But they all will be tailor-made tools for your winning this season. I want you to know in this season you have a superpower. Somebody holler, I got a superpower. I, I love the Avengers. I love all. I was watching Justice League. I, I was watching all of that stuff this week because uh, I was trying to remind myself uh, that, you know, I got a special superpower that distinguishes and differentiates me from everybody else in the crowd. And as you go in this season, young person, I want you to know you have a superpower. It is unique to you. It is that thing that God has placed in your life that no one else can replicate or duplicate. It is that thing that you will lean on to help you get through this season. And the sooner you find your superpower, the more comfortable you will be with your authentic self. But when you don't know your superpower, you look at that person who's flying like, man, I wish I could fly. No, you're supposed to just run fast. You're supposed to be flash. Somebody say amen. Flash will get there. Flash will get there almost as fast as Superman. But imagine if Flash was just hung up on flying. Run real fast and just try to fly. Didn't get off the ground. Mixed up with his superpower. You must find the unique gift that God has placed in your hands. And allow that gift 
to carry you through your seasons. And the final thing I'll say, the king, the current king, when he ran up to David or found David or, or David was introduced to him, the king said, listen, David, you're not going to take on all the stuff I'm telling you to take on. Okay, I get it. You feel like you're called to do this differently. Okay, I get it. But the king Saul said to David, go and may the Lord be with you. That's really the best advice you can have from someone who may not be all the way bought into your method, but they believe in your mission. Find you some folk who can acknowledge that we may not do it the same, but I believe that you are called for this season. And my best advice to you is to go and may the Lord be with you. You win seasons. You win stages of your life. You win transitions as long as God goes with you. How many of you know when God is with you, God is more than the whole world against you when God is with you it matters very little what others say about your circumstance I'm not going to say it does not matter at all because sometimes when you're looking around and you got all the naysayers sometimes it can penetrate and cause your confidence to be shaken but one thing I've learned in life is that when God is with me even with the peanut gallery in my ear, there comes moments where the voice of God, the presence of God, the promises of God, the power of God, they help me to drown out the voices of the naysayers. All those individuals, all those, those trends, all those realities that would try and cause me to believe that I can't win this season, God being with me. I walk with a different courage when God is with me. I walk with a different confidence when I know God is with me. I'm not arrogant. I'm not a bully. I just know that, come on, you can hit me with your best shot, but I know God is with me. And people of God, I want you to walk through your seasons, showing up in your authentic self. I want you to walk through your seasons appreciating that, you know, you have to be curious I want you to find your rocks and your superpower, but more than anything, I want you to know that God is with you. Come on, stand with me to your feet and let's take a few moments and ask God to help us to win this season. Grab the hand of someone next to you if you don't mind or give them a touch of love and affirmation. And I just want you to just say with a sense of confidence and conviction as you're touching them, just say, you will win this season. Say that to them. You will win this season. You will win this season. Whether it's a season of schooling, whether it's a season of teaching, whether it's a season of parenting, whether it's a season of healing or recovery, you will win this season and so God I pray right now for the person I'm touching I pray right now for the person Lord God who is literally transitioning from one season of life to another just like the morning coolness burns off into an afternoon heat wave I pray God that you will remind them that they have what they need to win the changing seasons. Just like God, they may find themselves out in the middle of nowhere like David the shepherd boy. God, I pray that the, the, the loneliness and the, the, the randomness of their social location does not cause them to forget. That God, they have, hallelujah, a season to win. I pray God for the person who's not yet to discover their 
superpower. They've not picked up their rocks, the unique gifts that you've placed in their hand. I pray, God, that even right now, this season will unearth the gifts, the talents. Lord God, whether it is in the arts, whether it is in their voice, whether it is in their mind, their brain, the logic, the gift of logic, the gift of being able to solve complex problems, whether it is, oh God, love for humanity, whether it is the capacity to serve, whether it is the capacity to heal, to recover, to bounce back, help them, Lord God, find their rocks, their superpowers that will take them through this season. Now lift your hands right where you are, oh God, it's me, oh Lord, and I stand in the need of prayer. It is not my mother, it is not my father, it is not my sister, it is not my brother, but it's me, oh Lord, and I need you. Somebody say, I need you, Lord. I need your strength, I need your power, I need your anointing to help me win this season. I don't want my life to be overdetermined by where I am today or where I was yesterday or even where I will be tomorrow. But God, I want my life to be characterized and defined by this truth that you are with me. And if you're with me, I can win every season. I can win every location. I can make it through every trial. So whether they're young, whether they're old, whether they're, Lord God, learned or whether they're learning oh god whether they find themselves in a place of familiarity or a place where it's strange i pray god that they will know you are with them save us oh god somebody say save me lord heal us oh god somebody say heal me lord strengthen us god somebody say strengthen me lord and do god a new thing in us in this season and we'll say thank you lord we'll say thank you lord we'll say thank you lord in jesus name we pray 